It was a little difficult to get everything to fit right, but eventually it did. Um, because I've got the Rotec TBI instead of the, the uh, aero injector, swapping the fuel delivery system onto the turbo was, was cake. I, I made no adjustment other than idle mission. Hopefully the guys with the air injectors won't have any problems either swapping over from normally aspirated. Um, the turbo performance is, is it's, it's night and day compared to the, the normally aspirated. Uh, my biggest issue was takeoff on grass. Uh, using, uh, we have a 2,600 foot strip and I was probably using at least three quarters, sometimes two thirds of it to get off in the summer, which doesn't leave a whole lot of safety margin, especially with trees on our cell head. This has cut my takeoff distance <coughs> in half. Now, is that before you put the prop, other prop on as well? This prop's always been on. It's always been on, okay. Even with the normally aspirated, I use this prop. Uh, presentation is such to give I, I, I it's it is what it is it's a it's looks easy. like you don't have a whole lot of room between the firewall and the engine to really work people is it? it's it's surprising I mean I can get I can get my hands into everything I need to get them into um, people doing the conversion from a normally aspirated to the turbo uh, might pay attention to where they're mounting certain items that's been on the discussion forum I've noticed um, I got a kind of a heads up before I put mine on. I knew what was what might be in the way by looking at pictures and pictures and pictures. And so I was ready. I had my battery moved. Um, my there really was nothing other than the um, everything fit fine. Uh, after installation there were some items that had to be addressed and the main one was whether the, the turbo's vibration is such that it doesn't like bolts, it doesn't let bolts fit tight, but it's something that people need to watch out for for the first 10 or 15 hours. I've got about 52, 53 hours on it now with the turbo. It, all the bolts seem to have seasoned and gotten themselves settled in. It's not an issue anymore. Fuel flow, naturally, if you're going to make more power, you're going to burn more fuel. There's no, there's no secret there. It's coming down here. On, on takeoff, the factory recommends 40 inches maximum. I use 42. 42 inches gives you about five, roughly five psi, which is a, to me is a safe number. I've got, I've got a blower on one of my vehicles, and just you know, five psi just seems to be okay with any stock engine. You will need to add fuel to keep the heads cool, which naturally affects your fuel burn. Nothing is free. After takeoff, 42 inches, I'll bring it back after about two minutes, I'll bring it back to 35 inches, finish whatever climb I need to do, and then my normal cruise is at 30 inches. With the blades set the way I've got them, 30 inches gives me about 3,100 RPM. It gives me about 140 miles per hour true, and it burns about five and a half to six gallons an hour, which is okay. The main thing you've got to watch out for again is cylinder head temp. Fuel flow with the turbo has a big effect on cylinder head temp. Not so much when it was normally aspirated for some reason. I don't know why. But if you see the cylinder heads climbing north of 400, then you better not take the risk. If I take off like today in a normal flight with 60 degree weather, the, the cylinder head temp won't go above 370. It's I mean, especially number three. 370 is the highest it's ever given. I've noticed that if you if you land somewhere or do a touch and go or start to taxi a little bit and the cylinder head temp goes up, it will take you 30 minutes of flying to get that temperature back down to where you're comfortable with. Um, there just doesn't seem to be enough airflow through it. It will if it's cool to start with, it will stay cool. If have you tried up, have you tried turning off your electronic ignition? I fly I, that's another issue. 
issues. Yes, I've done that, and I need, that's another issue with the timing on this thing. Uh, the factory time says they want the, the number the number two is fixed. You can't do anything about the secondary. Is fixed. Right. The number one is adjustable. They recommend 10 degrees before top dead center, with the secondary running at 28 degrees. I have not figured out how the 10 degrees makes any difference if you've already ignited the fuel 18 degrees before that. It makes it easier to start from. Well, well no, because you can't. Well, it may do, but there's no difficulty starting. I, I've, I, had, I had cylinder head problems with my number three until I turned off the electronic ignition. So now when I'm, after I get my initial climb, I turn it off and I leave it off. Well, see, I think I've got to the point, it, it didn't really make a difference for me. The, uh, I, try, I experimented with 10 degrees. It didn't like to run with 10 degrees. I shut the secondary off and tried to run with 10. It really didn't like it. Uh -huh. So I went, I just, I played with it until I found that 24 seems to be what it likes. So now I'm running 24 instead of 10. Uh, don't don't okay. tell the factory because they'll send me a bad one. We don't recommend it. But they couldn't give me an explanation of why they wanted 10 in the first place. When, but I have tried that and it, it's fuel seems to have a bigger impact on the ignition time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, with it normally estimated, you're correct. I, it will fly better with the first ignition one. Yeah. Yeah. The turbo is good. Oh, what what I've found too is a lot of people have complained about these things. This gets away from the turbo a little bit, but the charging system on this thing is marginal. Yeah. What I have found, and it was just pure accident when I was trying to get cylinder head temperatures down. I after takeoff, I shut the secondary off. As soon as I shut the secondary off, that takes, that's probably the biggest load on this. So that, that's the electronic ignition. The electronic yeah. ignition is the biggest yeah. load on this thing. As soon as I shut that thing off, you can watch that battery, that charger just, just kind of loosen up, and then I'm up to 14.4 volts, and everything's fine. And I fly like that now. Fine. I don't, it doesn't seem to hurt cylinder head temp. It keeps my battery charge. Everything's happy with the secondary off. Yeah. is not an issue. And originally, I had the lower cooler like everybody does when they first build up. I went for the top one, and it's, it's, I've never had a problem with fuel. I wish I could go to the top one, but my cowling is, too low. is too low, yeah. Well, there, I mean, there's a lot of, the, the, these top fins can be taken completely Yeah, low. but mine's really low. It's I measured low. it, and it's, oh. you know. I'm going to try to get the top one on mine, too, because it's a whole lot easier to get down on the bottom, though, if you don't have that oil thing. Right? Yeah. I like I like this. I just, it, it's one of the few mods that they've allowed us to do that actually works pretty good. Um, and I didn't go with the the, the, the baffling kit that they sell yeah. with this as actually opened up completely in the back. Yeah, I like I like your little. This works fine. I mean, I, yeah. it's. I even experimented. Cabin, but it doesn't work. There's it because it's it's kind of a catch twenty two. Buy yourself time, buy yourself some ski bibs. Yeah, you, you don't yeah. have enough. Yeah. Well, I got an electric yeah. jacket now. Yeah. But I do. I have mounted. I have got buffs that I've mounted on these two buffs. Yeah. And they are excellent. I, you can see it's all plumbed for cabin yeah. heat. And with the two heat buffs, I, there wasn't a day in the winter I couldn't fly. Yeah. Um, what else? Been too, it, I didn't keep good notes, and it's been too long since I put it on to remember any issues that I had other than the exhaust needing a lot of twisting and bending and the bolts yeah. loosening. How, uh, how high have you got? Altitude? Yeah. Uh, 8,000 is about the highest I've ever been with it. I, I like low. I, you know, I like to be... Well, we don't need it around here. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've never had it, you know, maybe if I go to Denver with it once in a while. But like I said, my, my primary purpose for buying, getting the turbo was for takeoffs. Yeah, yeah. That 80 horsepower, 
you'd never see 80 horsepower on this thing. If, 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 you, if, you're if, lucky. if you had 2600 paved, it would be no problem. Right. But that first that first 200 feet is, you know, yeah, yeah. is dragging. Well, thank you very much, Gary. That's if there's it. Any, well, I'd rather answer que you know, specific questions. Like, like I said, I, I don't have notes, so I couldn't. Uh... Was there a problem with the heat blanket Did, around your turbo? Um, th mostly caused when the bolts came loose from the downpipe, it burnt the blanket. Okay. It actually took the glass and melted it, and it would turn into glass. Um, this is my second right. second turbo blanket. Um, that is one issue too. The heat, this this green is what they call titanium. They call this titanium wrap for whatever reason. Is is pretty. But it's you can only use it once, and then you throw it away. So on the annual condition Replace inspection, it. when you want to pull it all off and inspect your exhaust, you you got to buy new. The okay. white stuff that I have here is reusable. Mm -hmm. So if you think you know, yeah, it's it's, it's like sixty or seventy dollars worth of wrap. So it's something to take into consideration. Sure. You might want to go with the stuff that doesn't look as pretty as the titanium. But for as long as it works, that's the biggest thing. It works. Yeah. Um, is the heating issue yeah. with it? Uh, yeah, you get a lot of heat back in here and stuff I like that. I wondered maybe like ceramic coating on the lower might help anything. I, I couldn't, I don't know. I don't know that you even really need the heat wrap. The heat wrap mostly, as everybody knows, is just to keep the heat in the exhaust because you want the heat to sure. turn to energy for the turbo. Yeah. Um, don't know that it helps so much. It, it probably stops a little bit of the radiator or you know, the cowling. But once you stop and park, that thing gets it's an oven. Yeah, anyway. I always wanted to make too hot to touch. Oh yeah, yeah. I always wanted to make little doors on the top of the cowling just to be able to let the yeah. heat, and, uh, heat air, hot air out. And I might do that when I have to replace that cowling. I haven't had it. And, uh, no ill effects with the turbo heat. You know, generating mm -hmm. heat. I did put an extra blanket back there because it runs so close to the firewall. I was concerned that it might, yeah, you know, have some effect inside the cabin. Um, so far, I don't notice anything. Ron, was that an aero conversion change or anything? Yes. Or, and then how much time did you have? Uh, let's see, I've, I've got 100 and 185 hours on the, air, on the engine now. 50 of it is with turbo, so 134. But uh, before I put the turbo on, before I bought the turbo kit, it was recommended that the I had Nixil cylinders on. Oh, they yeah. recommended that not, you, to that not to do yeah. that. Yeah, I read that. Of course, that. Porsche has put the turbos and Nixil cylinders for years. Yeah. I never had an issue. Just take my we did. <laughs> so anyway, I ended up, I ended up throwing yeah. the Nixil cylinders away because the heads kind of welded themselves. Yes, they no, do. No, actually, well, though, the the cylinders actually mushroom inside the heads, and then you can't get the heads off there. So anyway, I changed to the heavy cylinders uh, probably 30 hours before I bought the turbo kit, so I was ready for it. And how, right. what's the elevation of fuel that you fly off of? Thousand. Like yeah. 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 I'm in a similar situation. Uh, I have an airfield just south of here, which we're at a thousand feet.